the parties of the Kenya Kwanzaa coalition entered into various agreements which were deposited with the Speaker of the National Assembly and the Speaker of the Senate for purposes of Article 108 of the Constitution of Kenya. The following were members, UDA, ANC, Fort Kenya, PA, Farmers Party, Chama Chakazi, Communist Party, Economic Freedom Party, Service Party, Tujibebe wa Kenya Party, Moja, and Maendeleo Party of Kenya, and the Democratic Party of Kenya. In accordance with the provision of Clause 3, Schedule 3, a power sharing agreement and development agenda for the certain regions of Kenya, I attach copies of these agreements, RG32. All those agreements talked about specific regions. The leaders who have their signatures can vast issues of appointments to do with specific regions. Power sharing agreement between UDA and ANC and Ford Kenya, for example, say that the UDA would dominate the coalition president, uh, the presidential and deputy presidential candidates that was honored. The president would agree, would guarantee the stature, the dignity, and financial and operational autonomy of the office of the deputy president, which I have been insisting on because it's part of the coalition agreement. The, the ANC would be allocated the position of the prime cabinet secretary, which has happened. Fort Kenya would be allocated the position of the speaker of the National Assembly. And that is why Honorable Masika Wetangula sits here today. In accordance with Article 2 of the Power Sharing Agreement, ANC at Fort Kenya would have a 30% share, share is a word, of the national government positions. This drives my utterances about shareholding. It is embedded in all these agreements that are attached here for you to read. I heard this morning an honorable member saying that the deputy president said the people of Ukabani will not get resources because they did not vote for Kenya Kwanzaa government. That is not true. The deputy president of the Republic of Kenya does not allocate resources. Resources for the development of the Republic of Kenya are appropriated by the National Assembly of Kenya, where I am today. The deputy president will help the president to oversee the implementation of funds allocated and appropriated by the National Assembly. It is therefore not possible that the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya has the capacity to deny any part of Kenya resources because of the way they voted. The decisions on how resources will be allocated for the development of the Republic of Kenya are made here by the Honorable Members. If your area has no development, please don't impeach the deputy president. Don't accuse him of not giving you resources. You are in this house to make sure that your area where you come from is allocated appropriate resources because that is your job. Uh, I, I, the agreements are attached, therefore I don't want to go into them. Uh, let me say my speeches on the shareholder issue were informed by the Voisade Power Sharing Covenants, which are founded on law, having been deposited with the Registrar of Political Parties, and lessons learned from the well-known disputed 202 NAC Power Sharing Agreement. Further, sharing agreements are a feature of government formation in all democracies in the world that provide for the formation. My pronouncements on the issue properly understood are not only anchored in law, but entirely harmless and incapable of creating, of being construed as a basis for ethnic animosity, a danger to national cohesion or a threat to national unity. On the contrary, coalition building has been one of the most important innovations since the disputed 2007 elections in ensuring stability, equitable sharing of political power, national cohesion, and fostering of national unity. Indeed, Kenya Kwanzaa main opponent in 2022 general election as Miola Umoja Coalition One Kenya Coalition Party was a political party consisting of 25 or political parties who also executed a power sharing agreement based on shares. I'm also aware that the Jubilee Coalition 
that executed a 50-50 power sharing agreement between TNA party and URP party for 2013 general election. I have thus not violated section 13.1a and 62 of the National Cohesion Integration, nor has this commission summoned me to explain any of my comments and how it can affect cohesion. However, notwithstanding the state power share agreement, upon election as deputy president, I went out of my way as required by the Constitution of Kenya to serve all Kenyans regardless of their political preferences during the election or ethnic origin. I now produce the following. Video showing some of my speeches all over the country as marked RG video 7. to confirm to the people of Nyanza that the Ruto administration will serve all Kenyans, those who elected us and those who did not. Kenya hii kila mutu wafanyiwe kazi. Kwa sababu kila mutu laliba kodi. Mimi si kusema Kenya ni ashia muda. Mimi sema serikali, mtu mba serikali. Wale wala kusaidia kuhu. Mr. Speaker, copies of documents demonstrating my efforts within the mandate allocated to me by the President to address security issues and economic equalization programs and policy in historically marginalized areas is an XRG33. The decision to embrace the broad-based government following the dissolution of cabinet after the Gen Z protest. I attach my video during the launch of the Honorable Raila Odinga's quest for EU chairmanship at State House, again as a demonstration of my embracing the broad-based government. Excellency Dr. William Ruto, President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces, Your Excellencies, Heads of States and Government present, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors and High Commissioners and Members of the Diplomatic Corps, Heads of Delegations, Members of Parliament and all dignitaries present, good morning. Your Excellency, let me say this is a great moment for our country. What a day, what a moment. We are here, Your Excellency, as a country to unveil Kenya's finest to go and lead Africa. It's a proud moment for this country. And I want to say, Your Excellency, the people of Kenya have been united to a man by the candidature of the Right Honorable Raila Odinga to be the chairperson of the African Union Commission. This is a quest that has brought pride to our nation. And I would like to tell the leaders here from Africa and the representatives that as a country as we present the Honorable Raila Odinga to be our candidate, it is because Africa 
our motherland deserves the best. The passion and zeal of the Right Honorable Aida Odinga in Pan Africanism is well documented. Passion knows no age, knows no limits. In the person of the Right Honorable Aida Odinga, He'll join the ranks of Jomo Kenyatta and Kwame Nkrumah in pushing the agenda for Africa. I therefore want to say, Your Excellency, the lessons of today are that Raila Odinga, the Right Honorable, is a man of great lessons endurance and perseverance. Today you are going to unveil the transformation of the Right Honorable Odinga from a national leader to an African statesman. And for us in leadership, we have learned great lessons of resilience, endurance and perseverance. Somebody may ask, why is Rigadi Gashagwa who has before had issues with the leadership of Raila Odinga. As a truthful man, I have nothing against him. It's only that we are competing for the same position between him and my boss. Now that he is going for a bigger seat in Africa, all of us, from the president, I and the rest of Kenya, are behind him. And the right honorable Raila Odinga. As a man who listens to the ground, let me confirm to you. I've listened to the ground, and all Kenyans across the political divide, across communities, are in support of your candidature. And we wish you well. Before I call your Excellency, let me acknowledge the place of family, not just in our lives, but in leadership. I think it is a great moment for the Right Honorable Raila Odinga. It's appropriate that I acknowledge on behalf of the country the role Mamaida Odinga has played in the life of this great son of this land. Mamaida Odinga, we salute you as a country for having been a very strong pillar to your husband in very difficult times and in his lowest moments you have always been there for him. We ask families to support their spouses. So Mamai Daudinga, as we wish you happy birthday, it is my hope and prayer that your next birthday will be celebrated at Addis next year. And if you invite President William Ruto to come and he's not able to come, Mr. President, I'll be very happy for you to send me to represent you in that great aspect. We therefore want to say as a country, it's a great moment. And the right of Robert Odinga, I have noted with a lot of appreciation, my wife, Pastor Dawkins, who is a very prayerful woman, has been praying for me and the President daily. And I noted from yesterday she has added you in her prayer. And because our prayers work, we have no doubt that you will get this hit. Mr. President, it is now my honor to request you to come and anchor Kenya's finest and embark on the journey of transformation of the Right Honorable Raila Odinga from a national leader to a great African statesman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. President William Ruto has many times appreciated my people issues and has repeatedly pronounced himself. Let me have the video number nine. Speaking of deputies, uh, um, uh, 
you have in the last uh, few weeks um, named Mr. Rigadi Gashagwa as your deputy. Um, uh, there's been quite a, a debate, and I'm sure you know that, uh, around uh, running mates in this country. Uh, perhaps this would be a great time to uh, shed light on why you settled on this gentleman. Rigadi Gashagwa is uh, somebody I have known. Rigadi Gashagwa is a very passionate leader. Rigadi Gashagwa is a people's person. He speaks about the things that I speak about. He speaks about ordinary people. He's concerned about matters to do with farmers. He's concerned about the things that are dear to ordinary Kenyans. And the nexus between me and uh, Rigadi Gashagwa is the people. He believes in bottom up the way I do. And that is why I chose Rigadi Gashagwa to work with me. Thank you very much. Speaking of deputies. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. In addition and almost in conclusion, I am not the only leader at the national level who has encouraged unity among Kenyans based on shared regional, geographical, and economic and other factors. I have attached several articles. Do your unity is not optional versus Wetangula. Ruto puts case for Gemma College in unity. Bijikenda unity in the offing. Masai leaders in unity talks ahead of next year's general election. I have attached those articles so that you understand that regions uniting does not mean they unite against other regions. They unite for common issues, common values, and to strengthen them to join other regions for national unity. Mr. Speaker, the motion dated 26 September 2024, tabled before the National Assembly, makes the generalized claims that have committed crimes under national laws. Proceeds of crime and anti-money anti -money laundering act, penal code, national cohesion and integration act as anti-corruption and economic crimes. It is on the basis of the claim that it is say that the threshold of impeachment has been met. I'm not aware of any active investigations by any state agency for offenses under the state laws. Neither have I been called upon to record any statement pertaining to any investigation. Just like any other Kenyan, the Constitution accords me the presumption of innocence in relation to criminal offenses until the contrary is proved in a court of law on a specific standard of evidence. Therefore, in the absence of any active investigations by any investigative agency in Kenya, I do not believe that there can be any serious reason to believe that I've committed any offense. Otherwise, that will be an indictment of the intelligence agencies as well as investigative agencies. Therefore, it is inconceivable that the threshold of the impeachment motion as defined in Article 145 of the Constitution can solely be based on the perception of the mover of the motion in the absence of any other evidence. I heard the mover this morning saying that all we need to do is to believe in him. I believe that cannot be the position. We need actual evidence against the deputy president. The net effect of the impeachment of this basis of allegations of criminal offenses, whose evidence has not been tried and tested in court of law or by bodies mandated to investigate, would be to disqualify me from the possibility of holding public office in relation to Article 99.3 without the benefit of due process of law and exhaustion of the systems of appeal as provided in the penal court. Mr. Speaker, I do not wish to respond to the issues I had this morning that are outside the motion. I want to confirm that I have tremendous respect for Kenyan women, and I have never disrespected them. What has happened is that as politicians, there is always propaganda to undermine somebody. I call upon anybody with evidence that I have ever disrespected that person to come out and provide that evidence. I had my very great friend, the Honorable Faith Gitao, say that I disrespect women. Many times I've been to Nyandarwa, 
have referred to Honorable Faith Getau as Ngatha. Ngatha is a Kikuyu name for a woman of great respect. That I have done countless times is on video. Finally, the Honorable Bos Sholei, I heard what you said in Eldoret. I heard this morning that you said I should be charged with treason. But my sister, me, I'm a grateful man. I remember, and I'll never forget. During the last administration, when I was arrested on fabricated charges for studying with the President William Ruto against the wish of the government at that time, Gladys Boshola came and sat with me at DCI headquarters, brought me tea, brought me lunch, sat with me, comforted me. At court, she coordinated the collection of 12.5 billion shillings as my cash bill. She came to see me in Gigiri for four days and had very kind words for me. Despite what you have said, my sister, I do remember that one good thing that you did for me, and I love you and cherish you for the rest of my life. Finally, Mr. Speaker, as I wind up, I want to appeal to this Honorable House to consider the allegations against me by the mover of the motion, weight against the attached evidence, weight against my defense and the attachments and the videos that I've played in this house. And exercise your mind and exercise your discretion. Search your conscience and decide if regarding Ashagwa is guilty of any of those allegations or is undergoing a political If you are so persuaded and you search your conscience without any intimidation or coercion or inducement and you think it's the right thing to do, please go ahead and do so. If you search your conscience and listen to the issues that have been adduced here and you find that there are no grounds to impeach the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. Please make the right decision. But as you do so, many members who are in this house remember what President William Ruto as Deputy President went through. And most of us stood with him. Regarding Ashagua underwent four years of persecution. Others were persecuted. But we took a firm stand because we believed we were doing the right thing. <clears throat> his family went and underwent humiliation. His friends underwent humiliation. He was a haunted man. And on Integration Day, he pronounced himself that freedom is here. Again, under the new administration, the same regarding Ashagwa, who underwent humiliation and persecution finds himself in the same space under that administration that he fought for. Try, look, reflect, and apply your conscience and make the right decision. Mr. Speaker of the House, I want to thank you for granting me this opportunity. And my address last night was not in any way meant to disrespect the House. Despite, Mr. Speaker, you having ruled that the matter should not be taken out of the House, it was being discussed in every TV station, in every meeting across Kenya, and Kenyans did not have a chance to also hear my side of the story. So I decided, since the accusations against me were everywhere in the country, the people of Kenya, and more so those who voted for me and President William Ruto, deserved also to hear my side of the story. I have tremendous respect the National Assembly and your ability and capacity to make the right decision. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you. Asante Nisan. Thank you very much, uh, David President.
Thank you very much, uh, David President. Uh, I'm sure your fears that you will not be heard fairly have been uh, allayed. You've been heard in absolute silence. You've been heard with total decorum from the House. And members, I salute you for the display of your legislative maturity in giving an opportunity to a subject to a motion in the person of the Deputy President to be heard. What is it, Rosa? The proceedings are still going on. Who is praying? Yes, uh, Senior Council. These Thank proceedings you. are still going on. Yes, indeed. Mr. Speaker, this is a house of record, and I had wanted to rise under standing order 65, 67.